Now, this is an interesting aspect of the functions, um, the arguments object. So it's function. as these arguments objects available. Uh, sorry, it's arguments, plural. So uh, I will run the function using three arguments instead of two. We have two parameters, two placeholders for values, let's say here in our function. But instead, we are running, we are calling the function with three arguments. This is possible in JavaScript. We don't have uh, like the limitation of uh, uh, giving like exact the exact number of arguments uh, according to the parameters. We we can give more or even less arguments to a function. Now, if I run this function, you will see that uh, the arguments is object has been uh, logged in the console. So uh, the first thing I want you to notice is that, okay, this is a, a little bit of a uh, advanced view of this arguments object, but I want you to notice like uh, the start and end of this of this value. The arguments is a value. And this is the square brackets, meaning that this argument object is something closely related to an array. So inside every function declared with the function keyword, this is important, uh, we have the arguments object available to us. And this is an array-like object so it's a, it is a list of values um, that contains the arguments that we passed uh, when calling the function. So as you can see, this arguments object contains all the values, even though we have just two parameters. So everything we pass as an argument, it can be as uh, long as we want. This, this list can be as long as we want. It is contained in this uh, array-like object. So the arguments has uh, just like the array, an indexing system. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, etc. And at its point, we have the values passed as arguments uh, according to the order in which they were passed. So two is in the first uh, zero index, the first place, three, the second, four, and so on. And um, an important property of the arguments object is the length. So I will try to run this code. Let me see. Um, okay. I will use the debugger keyword. And I will call this function two times, or, or let's say many times, just to see what happens. So I'm declaring the function again, but this time I'm entering the debugger keyword, which is very, very important. You should learn about everything about this keyword in JavaScript because it's one of the best ways of debugging our code. This means that when the, this function will be called, not when it this function will be declared, but only when this function will be called on this line, uh, the debugger will stop the execution of the program and uh, allow us to go inside the environment, the JavaScript environment, and see uh, what the current environment um, holds, what kind of variables it holds, and what kind of state uh, it is in. So. Uh, this will run the function. The debugger will stop execution at this point. I will then click, have to click the uh, button to continue the execution of the program. The function will be called again. The debugger will stop the execution once more. And this will happen three times. So let's go through the code. 
As you can see, the debugger, it's, we see a post in debugger. So the add function was called once, and we went into this function while executing the function, and the debugger stopped the program right here. And as you can see, uh, here in the scope, in the local scope, I can see uh, all the variables that are available inside this function scope, the local scope, as we say. So we have A and B, which are the parameters. And right now they're undefined because I didn't add any arguments here while, while calling this function. So by default, the parameters are undefined. Um, and then we have the arguments, which as you can see is also empty. It has a length of zero. And that's because I placed the debugger before running this line. So in order to continue, I will press the resume script execution button once. We once, once again go into the uh, debugger because we now are calling the function add a second time with one, two, three. This time A, let me see, is one and B is two because we called the function with the arguments. And of course we cannot see the arguments. Uh, no, okay, we can see it. I thought we could not see it like this. Uh, we can see that the arguments is an array-like object with these three values and a length of three. I can even at this point, while I have the debugger uh, pausing the execution, I can go into the console if I'm not mistaken. I think I can see, yes. I can see the arguments uh, from the local scope. So the arguments is an array-like object. I can see how many values were passed by the, uh, the caller. Uh, and I can, of course, go into each of the argument values using the array bracket notation. Uh, so I have the first three values that were passed. And of course, the fourth is not available, so I get undefined. And I can use the for loop as you can see, just like an ordinary array, to go through the arguments. So a fancy way to go through the arguments of a function call is to um, use the loop and then the arguments array-like object. Now, I will go back to the source I will press the um, resume script execution once more. Now I mean the third call of the function. And as you can see, A and B have uh, the values A and B, but the argument contains all the values. Uh, A, B, C, D, and the length of course is uh, four. Um, there's also this call property, which means contains the function that called this argument object. It's like the parent of the arguments object. And it's a, a, a handy way to get the arguments object is a handy way to get all the values that were passed uh, when the function was called um, uh, without uh, having to uh, uh, care about how many parameters we had placed on the function declaration. So the argument will always contain all the values, even if the function uh, didn't have a uh, parameter. So I will hit the resume script execution once again. This is the third time. As you can see, the scope is cleared after uh, leaving the debugger. And if I restructure I will place it here so if I restructure the function so that 
there are no parameters, no placeholders for the argument values. Um, I will execute this with uh, four values and you will see that uh, this code will, this function, even though uh, it doesn't have any parameters, it has the all the arguments inside this argument object. Um, and thus we can, let's say, go through the uh, arguments and loop over them and do something uh, or use the arguments, brackets, notation uh, to do something with them. Now, what's the use of the arguments, uh, you might say? Um, to be honest, it's something that we don't use very often. Although, as you can see, there's a lot of power inside this uh, keyword. Um, one uh, uh, case where we might want to use the arguments is when we don't have a uh, defined uh, or a definite uh, number of uh, parameters. For example, I might want to have a function that adds numbers, okay? But I'm not sure how many numbers the user wants to add. For example, I might want to add two numbers. I might want to add three numbers. Or I might want to add, I don't know, more than 10 numbers. And this can easily go, let's say, up to 100, although this will not be very really useful code. But uh, what if I had an indefinite number of arguments and maybe even a long number of arguments? Uh, of course, I cannot uh, create 100 parameters and I cannot like um, uh, have an easy way to detect how many parameters I have and add them, use them as variables for example, A, B, C, D, and check whether, let's say, for example, in the first call, I only have these two uh, parameters filled with values. In the second call, only these ones, and so on. So in this case, when I have a, uh, the number of argument is unknown or unpredicted, let's say, I can only use the arguments. And if I want to add all these numbers together, I can just do, And, and since I'm, I want my code to run as fast as possible, I'm not going to run this operation every time uh, the for loop goes over an iteration. So this line, this statement will be, this expression, sorry, will be run on every loop, meaning if I have 100 numbers, JavaScript will have to go into this object and get the length, which is a kind of a process that takes up, let's say, some time and some CPU cycles. So I'm going to say arguments length. I'm going to store this value once. So JavaScript will have to go through this process only once. And then I will use this variable, which is much faster and less costly. And I will say, uh, let's go and iterate through the arguments array. So um, there I'm going to say, add the arguments like this and console log sum. So let's go over this code again. I can run this function without a single parameter, as you can see, and I can place or call this function with as many arguments as I want. Now, the number of arguments here is uh, whatever I want. So I first, uh, sorry, this is my mistake. I cannot reassign a value to a constant. So I will say let sum equals zero. 
then store the length of the arguments object in a variable so as not to run this operation again and again just uh, saving a couple of milliseconds from my execution and then I'm using the for loop to go over the arguments uh, array like object and then for each argument value I'm going to add the value to the sum and if this code uh, works I will get the sum of one and two the sum of one two three and the sum of these numbers so let's make this easier to test So we have three, we have six, and we have 10, and our code works. So this is a case where we might want to use the arguments and uh, uh, take as input a uh, number of, uh, a variable, a number of arguments, meaning from one or zero to up a million or a million or more. Um, Questions? Okay, so um, things to keep in mind that the arguments object is an array like object. So it's not an array. It's just a cheap version of an array meaning we can only use the bracket notation and the dot length. We don't have, for example, the map method or the for each method we use in arrays to loop. And it's just a cheaper, more lightweight version of an array. That's why we say it's an array-like object. It's not an array. Um, these arguments is available to us only when we declare a function with the function keyword. Uh, and uh, meaning that when we use the arrow functions, uh, we cannot, we don't have access to this argument objects. Um, the question is converting arguments into arrays, is it useful? Um, converting arguments into an array is useful if we want to use array methods, like let's say the for each or the map. So we cannot use the map or the for each methods. Uh, we saw how uh, you saw what map and for each uh, do when we try to recreate these functions on our own. Uh, these functions are not available in the arguments object because it is not a array. It's something like uh, cheaper, as I said. So there's no map or for each. So we can convert the arguments object into an array and then use map for it, sort, reverse, or all the array methods. So the advantage that we get, get if we convert the arguments into an array is that we get all the array methods which are really useful. For example, we can reverse the order of the arguments. Um, so I see the parameter is empty and not an array. Uh, Patrick, so yes, there is no parameter. Uh, the arguments object is always available in our functions whenever we declare them with function. And this function is flexible and accepts number of arrays, uh, number, okay, accepts numbers or arrays. Um, so this function can accept anything we like, okay? So uh, okay, let's let's rewrite the code. The values can be anything we want. So I can I will rewrite the code. And I will explain what I'm doing just to. Okay. 
So I can use any kind of value I want. So I rename this function to concat. Uh, I'm initializing an empty string. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to concatenate string values that are passed as arguments, and then create a, uh, a string, a big string. So um, as you can see, there's an error here, there's a zero. And um, I don't know why we have this zero. Uh, we can use any kind of value. Uh, No, I'm not sure why. Ah, okay, yes. I think, um, now let's debug uh, again. Can I call my function add and not concat? I can call it whatever I want, okay? The function name can be everything, anything we want. So I will just, um debug let's say here the debugger is really nice when we want to see what happens during a loop so take a look at the code for a couple of seconds before i run it and use the debugger so let's see um so we have uh, a debugger uh, okay that's my bad because i wasn't calling the correct function so uh let's see here uh so right here we have arguments which is the array like object and we have one and string is an empty string. Also, um, uh, we haven't executed this command, so we don't see like the, uh, the complete string right now. I will step to the next execution. And right now, the string is hello because it's we're in the second iteration and it runs, it, it's going to get the second let me see the second arguments um, element and then concatenate it and give us back the hello world so the reason why i was getting the zero was because i was running the wrong function uh, thank you patrick um, that was my mistake now i understand what you meant uh, another question is, can we use args like we use arguments, or I guess you mean parameters? So the question is whether we can use, let's take the simple No, we cannot use it, because if we place a parameter named arguments here, it will override the argument objects so the arguments object is available inside the function and we don't have to declare it okay in here we declare only our custom parameters the arguments object is only placed and used inside the function without um, declaring it so no we can only use it inside the function body we don't have to put it here uh, it's just one of those uh, surprising facts of JavaScript, a variable that is available to us without even declaring it, and it's always there. Um, let me know if I answered all your questions or you need some more information on what we saw. Um, let me know, Chetin, if uh, I've covered your question. So, uh, so this is the arguments object. And as I said, just before wrapping this up, uh, it's something that we don't see and use often, but it's quite, as you can see, powerful. 